Hello and welcome to our ADHD Empowerment uh, Month Lives on LinkedIn. I'm Stephanie, I'm the founder of the ADHD Advocate and today I've got Eleni from the US. Eleni, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Eleni. I am based here in New York, uh, working with the ADHD Advocate and I am a coach that really works um, primarily with parents and students and individuals, of course, uh, with ADHD or suspected ADHD diagnosis. And a lot of the coaching I do centers on uh, around academics. So today's topic is really quite timely. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to have you here. I remember Lenny, you and I did those Monday lives for about a year. And uh, yeah, it's been a long time since you and I have been live. It talking. certainly has. It certainly has from when we were living in the UK and now back here in New York. Uh, things have changed in some ways tremendously, but other ways, uh, you know, these still, these um, these uh, challenges that our neurodiverse kids face in schools where they're not always designed to accommodate those of us that learn a bit differently. So um, this is something that we can help with and we can chat a little about today. No, definitely. We're very lucky to have you here to talk about Thank your experience. You. And so this week we are going to be focusing on ADHD and academic success all week. Last week, we looked at ADHD Insights. So if you did miss last week, do have a listen. There were some really good talks about diet and nutrition, um, also talks around self you know, identity and the diagnosis, which is a really interesting listen. And um, we also spoke about ADHD and AI. Um, it's a bit of a longer webinar, that one, but definitely worth listening to, particularly at the end, because we show you literally how to get some SEN support for your child using um, AI. So please do have a listen, even if it's the last couple of minutes, do tune in. So today we're going to be talking about generally academic success and ADHD and, and the main things, I guess, to keep in mind um, in order to make sure that we're getting the best out of our students with ADHD and neurodiversity. So Eleni and I created the Academic Success Program yeah. and I guess it would be helpful, Eleni, maybe we can just outline to everyone you know, the six steps to academic success that we came up with and why it's been so helpful for both parents and their, their, their kids with ADHD. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as Stephanie said, we really um, looked at the primary um, challenges that many of our students face. And this is even before we kind of look at their academic performance or sort of when they're getting into. This has to do so much before they even kind of get started to figure out ways to um, engage and keep them authentically interested in the process they're about to embark on. Because that's really what it is, right? Our brains do great when it's something that we really want to be into or we're very interested to study. But that's not always the case in school, whether you're in high school or approaching university or really in life, right? We have to make sure that the why, and really that's the, I would say, the core of our program, um, keeping that why very visible and very accessible so that we can remind ourselves why we're working and sort of heading down this path. Yeah, because ADHD is a very kind of purpose-driven, there's got to be a point. If there's no point, there's no point. And quite often when we're coaching a student with ADHD and we ask them, you know, so why is this important, uh, the study, and they say, oh, so I get good grades and why is that important? Uh, so I can get into university, why is that important? So I can, you know, study the degree to get me a good job. Again, you know, and they just don't even know <laughs> what job they're actually, you know, what's it all for? They don't even know themselves. And Obviously, that's a big problem because, you know, as you said, Eleni, ADHD is a hot wire for interest, um, reward. And unfortunately, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, GCSE is an A-levels and, and university degrees. And I say ADHD is we're sprinters, not marathon runners. So we really do need to keep the eye on the why, keep those uh, incentives uh, quite close in sight. Um, so that we can keep kind of moving forward. But uh, from what we've seen, Eleni, definitely the body double, uh, helping ADHDs stay on track, holding them accountable, particularly in a community of like-minded uh, peers. It makes a massive difference, doesn't it? And especially that, Stephanie, um, with the, some of the students that we've coached in groups, we just 
kind of acknowledge that the process for them, for us, is going to look in many cases so much different than maybe their neurotypical peers. So something that requires so much sustained concentration and focus and time, um, maybe, you know, one of our students is a, you know, audio learner as opposed to visual, just, just tweaking that process so they can be successful is something that's often overlooked, I think, um, not only in the classroom, maybe perhaps among their friends. So they are, might be done with an assignment in a far shorter time. And now we sort of um, give our students the space and the opportunity to acknowledge that and uh, normalize it. It's okay that this is, is not gonna work the same way for you and give them the tools that they can use to work at their own pace so they can be successful their own way. Yeah, no, that, that, that is it in a nutshell. And uh, just on that, yeah, what we've found definitely is that rejection sensitive dysphoria that gets in the way the most for these young ADHDs, well, all of us ADHDs really, let's face it, <laughs> as well, right? It is very crippling. And one of the big things about RSD is that, you know, we don't like to ask for help. We don't like to be treated differently. We want to just fit in. We want to belong, uh, you know, because otherwise, I mean, that is rejection, right? Not belonging. So a lot of ADHDs, we see this a lot in our workplace coaching, you know, they don't ask for what they need. They don't ask for, say, instead of providing uh, an update by email that they can provide it just verbally and it be maybe, um, you know, kind of recorded with AI or something like that. Uh, but they, they really don't want to ask because they don't want to look as if they don't know or they're not good enough. And this is very much the case, isn't it, with, with students at, at school? Tremendously, tremendously. I mean, they will, um, you know, become very, uh, will avoid. Um, it can become very difficult to um, keep that why at the forefront. So these assignments just keep getting sort of left behind and then it becomes even more difficult to catch up. And then that's another, you know, issue that we need to then sort of explore. Um, really, the I, I want to go back to just the exhaustion sometimes that our students face because of the effort that is required to really sustain this level of work. I mean, these are very difficult formative years. We're talking about studying for these exams, GCSEs, A-levels, SAT, ACTs here in the United States. Um, these are exhausting processes for these students and the stakes are really, really high. And even you know, uh, transitioning from schoolwork to focusing on this exam prep is exhausting. And um, you know, just trying to um, keep up with what everybody, what they think everybody else is doing can be just an additional strain that can really affect uh, all parts of their performance and, and their life. As you said, Stephanie, the RSD can be, often is the most debilitating uh, symptom that, that I see in coaching. Yeah, it's that, it's that overwhelm, you know, before they, yeah, before they even begin, if they feel they're defeated, which often, yeah. like I said, if the work's built up, um, and, and particularly when they don't understand their ADHD brain, because they, they're going to be pretty brutal to themselves for, you know, procrastinating, um, you know, we've got time blindness, obviously there's struggles with executive function. Yeah. And when there's not that label, when they, you know, we talk about naming it to tame it and coaching, it's, it's really important. The more they understand, can look through the HD lens, which is our step one of our six steps right. to academic success. That's right. Yeah, the better able they're to address any of these issues and, and to accept that these are just things about the ADHD and not themselves. Um, because otherwise they're kind of beat before they even begun, particularly with all the negative messaging they receive throughout their lives. And then here we go, perform, you know, huge performance, guys. Let's just go. And they're not really ready for that um, if they have been beating themselves up for years without knowing what's going on. So, That's step right. one, yeah, it's important, isn't it? Look it through is. their lens. It is. And also through coaching, through our academic success programs, um, we really strongly believe in a strength a strengths-based approach. So once we do find that um, that area, that topic, that what works for our clients, for our students, um, then the, this becomes a much different conversation, right? I mean, the potential is really unleashed and they can then see uh, what maybe has been eluding them because they are capable, they can achieve what they now recognize to be something that they very much want to do. So it's a great, it's very exciting actually, once we sort of um, help them pinpoint what it is that's been getting in the way or what it is that they want to do, um, really the, it ch changes everything. Yeah, no, and definitely in the in the community of their like-minded peers. I mean, we've had some great times. We, we did our pilots, the high school success program, I ran those 
last year or earlier this year. I can't like see this my time blindness. And this year has gone by so quickly. Yep. I think it was earlier this year, wasn't it? it was, yeah. yeah. So we ran the five week one and a 10 week one. Yes. And yeah, the group of kids we had were amazing. Um, it was a very interesting experience, but the coaching approach works really, really well um, in terms of trying to help them understand their ADHD brain, you know, design their study environment. You know, so through this program, we had the students be able to work out exactly what they needed while they studied. They were then able to communicate that to maybe family members that, you know, had the TV on too loudly. They're able to explain in that ADHD way um, about what it was that really made it so difficult and to get other people on board, which is, you know, a huge part of the problem is, you know, you can understand what you need, but if you can't communicate it and bring others on board to facilitate, yeah, you're still gonna have a problem, so. yeah. And just to add to that, Stephanie, not only were the uh, students able to um, sort of speak very freely about the challenges they've um, experienced, which was great. So you don't feel, you see these students that don't feel like they're the only ones that maybe have this uh, challenge or approach things a different way or feel like they're the only ones that don't get this, but also the parents. So when we do uh, run our, our academic success programs, we do have an opportunity for the parents to be involved. And it's really useful, I think, for them too, to not only hear from their students, from other students, other parents. It's really, it, it's sort of a holistic way that we can support these these students that are, you know, just entering a uh, very, very tough chapter uh in their journey and their marathon as you said yeah no, and you're, you're spot on there the parents and that's why we get them involved you know step one is with parents and the students uh for that uh particular session and yeah it's transformational because yeah, yeah we don't mean to us parents um we always want the best for our kids we feel that if we keep on them you know we have to that's what it is to be a good parent during this time but yeah, we'll ask how effective is that approach because quite often uh, for an ADHD who is RSD and sometimes oppositional, you know, if you tell us what to do, then ah, I thought I was going to do that, but you've just told me RSD, I'm not going to do that anymore because, you know, you feel you have to tell me this because I'm. you must assume that, you know, I'm lazy or don't know what I'm doing, so I'm not going to do it now. And that is the narrative going on in their head. So we help parents use a coaching approach. We kind of teach them a little bit of how to coach, you know, your, your uh, child in order to, you know, get them to be able to do the things that you, know, you kind of want them to do, but uh, they want to do as well. Um, and it's yeah. so important during this time, right, that the relationship between you and your child is strong and there's not that conflict, which can so often derail okay. these kids from being able to study at all, really. Absolutely. We talked about the ADHD lens and that is, I would say, as if not more important uh, for parents to um, help manage the um, sort of the narrative, the, the family dynamic, the um, environment that, uh, that, that that's created in the home, because that 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 slight shift uh, can really make the difference between a, a very empowering relationship with your child or one that can be, you know, quite full of quite acrimonious. Um, but the co the coaching approach is it, it works. Yeah, so if you want to know more, we're, we've got some um, programs coming up for the High School Success Program. Um, the next five-week one is starting in November, and that'll keep kind of going five weeks until we get to the actual exams themselves. And the program will shift a little bit to kind of cater for actually doing exams. Um, so, again, it's that body double with, like, lots of check-ins uh, because we at the ADHD Advocate very much along Dr. Hallowell's uh, belief that the life goal of ADHD is, should be interdependence, not independence. Yeah. And that's one of the massive problems with education. The whole goal, you know, EHCPs is about trying to set the student up to be independent. For us ADHD is not the best idea to leave us on our own to do things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh yeah, it's just me that suffers, right? Because we will always take the hit. We can do things for others, we can't do for ourselves. And that is why the body double strategy is key. And, that, and that's why as well this program um, is just so um, transformational for these kids because it holds them, you know, throughout what is the most, I guess, scary period of their lives, right? So it much is scary. Fear. It's mm, really scary. overwhelming. It, and that unknown, that, um, you know, just uncertainty, uh, we don't do really well with that. Um, and certainly not knowing how to prepare for the unknown, that's, you know, the wheels could go off, you know, very, very quickly. But you're right, having this community that we're building, that we're supporting, um, it really can help these students and, and best prepare them for what's ahead. Yeah, so do have a look. We'll put the link, www.theagentacademy.co.uk, and you can register for one of those programs. Also, we're going to be at the TES SEN show Friday and Saturday this week 
So do look out for us. Uh, we're also going to be speaking on the Saturday about harnessing the power of ADHD coaching uh, in order to help students succeed academically. And just know as well that what these kids learn in these programs and through the coaching takes them far beyond the academic, isn't it, Eleni? These are skills and, and this is mindset and skills for life. 100%, Stephanie, absolutely. This is just uh, sort of laying the, the groundwork and, and creating that foundation for these students as they move through life and recognize they might learn differently, but that doesn't mean they are any less qualified or less prepared to take on what's what's coming their way. They can do everything. Exactly. Like, isn't this right, Eleni? A lot of the adults that we coach, a lot of them are at the top of their industries. They are. Oh, yeah insanely successful at least in their business work life they they are they are and even some of the older students that I've coached graduate students they're working on these you know phenomenally interesting and complicated PhD programs but you know it's keeping them organized to stay on track to finish the paper to make sure it gets done to make sure all the research is sort of you know in line and and properly accounted for um that's where they need some help and that's okay that's what we're here for Exactly. Interdependence. So yeah, if anything, we really want you to take away the end of this week is that goal. It's, you know, shifting the mindset towards interdependence, the body double, the most powerful strategy for ADHD is. But thank you for joining us. Thanks, Eleni. Yes, this and- is great. Thank you very much. I uh, Please do, as Stephanie said, uh, check out our websites for uh, more information about coaching or academic success programs. Yeah, thank you. And tomorrow we'll have Gemma talking about the actual power of the body double strategy as she's been running the student study halls. Um, And also we're going to talk about just general implementation sessions. So kind of using that time to actually implement together and the power, how powerful it is and what you can achieve. So join us tomorrow. Thanks, Eleni. Sounds great. Thank Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.